Well, hello there. Welcome back to the channel. My name is James and here at 20th and 21st Movies, we are about all things cinema. Well, this is an exciting time of the year because we're getting ready for the July Barnes & Noble Criterion Collection Sale here in the United States. We're only a few days away from the sale at the time of recording this video and putting this up on YouTube. And I gotta tell you, I am really, really looking forward to this July sale at Barnes & Noble as so many people are. So I know that folks are putting together their wish list of titles that they want to pick up in this upcoming July sale. And so I thought I would put together a video here talking about some recommendations in a particular genre that I really love. I love a good suspense thriller. And I know that many of you do as well. And so I thought, what are some good suspense thrillers that I could recommend that are in the Criterion Collection that if you don't already have, you might wanna consider picking up, especially some titles that maybe didn't come out as recently, but maybe came out a few years ago that might be a little bit under the radar now. So I've got nine titles here. I've got a stack of goodness here that I'm gonna share, nine beautiful titles that I'm gonna talk about briefly. I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail about each title. I'm just gonna mention the title, tell you a little bit about it. And these are nine titles that I highly recommend if you're looking for a good suspense thriller and they're titles that are in the Criterion Collection. Now, these are titles that are from some of my favorite directors. These are also titles over a long period of time in the history of cinema. So I've got titles going back to the 1930s all the way up to the early 2000s. So got a nice variety here that I'm looking forward to talking with you about. So let's jump right into these. So the first title is a title from my favorite all-time director. Of course, recently I did a video on this channel, my director series, where I talked about Sir Alfred Hitchcock. He is my favorite all-time director. And one of his early films from his British period is a film that I'm gonna recommend that you check out if you haven't done so already. And it's called The 39 Steps. Now, this is a film from 1935. It comes in at spine number 56 in the Criterion Collection, so it's been in the collection for a while. And this is a really nice suspense thriller. This is from Sir Alfred Hitchcock from 1935, from his early British period. And this film stars Robert Donat and Madeline Carroll. It's basically an espionage, man on the run, signature early Alfred Hitchcock film. This is definitely one to consider. If you haven't checked out the 39 Steps from Alfred Hitchcock, definitely check this one out. I love Alfred Hitchcock throughout the entirety of his filmography. And this is a great example of a film from his early British period, The 39 Steps. The next film that I'll talk about is from 1955, and this is a film that is Charles Lawton's only director credit, or at least full director credit, and it stars Robert Mitchum and Shelley Winters, and it's called The Night of the Hunter. This is a film from 1955, and this comes in at spine number 541 in the Criterion Collection. The Night of the Hunter is a really, really nice film. Now, of course, all the films I'm gonna share with you in this video, all nine films, are great films in the suspense thriller genre category. This is a great, great film, and Robert Mitchum's performance really fuels this film. And if you look at the back of the case, one sentence or one piece of a sentence really tells you a lot about this film and why you need to pick it up. This is a horror movie with qualities of a grim fairy tale. And that really describes this film beautifully. I mean, this is a fantastic film. Mitchum's performance is absolutely incredible. So The Night of the Hunter is set in the Great Depression and Robert Mitchum plays a religious fanatic con man. And he's trying to swindle a widow and her children, the widow's played by Shelley Winters in this movie, into telling him where $10,000 is that her deceased husband hid before he went off to prison and died. So this is just a great film. It's The Night of the Hunter, stars Robert Mitchum, very scary, creepy performance by Robert Mitchum, and it's part of what fuels this incredible movie. The visuals are incredible in this film. This is just a great film. If you don't have Night of the Hunter, definitely add this one to your collection. 
All right, the next one is a film from the 1960s. So I've covered a film from 1935, 1955. Now we're up to 1966. And this is from the director of the Alienation Trilogy. So films like La Ventura, La Note, and Le Clis. This is Michelangelo Antonioni's 1966 film, Blow Up. Now this is a really, really nice film. This comes in at spy number 865 in the Criterion Collection. And this is a great film. This film stars David Hemmings and Vanessa Redgrave. So in this film, David Hemmings plays a fashion photographer who captures a death after following lovers in a park. So he captures footage of a death that takes place in the park after he's following a couple of lovers in that park. So this is a really fascinating film from Michelangelo Antonioni. And this is a very nice digipack edition from the Criterion Collection. You may know that this film served as inspiration for Brian De Palma's film, Blowout, that came out in 1981, starring John Travolta, Nancy Allen, and John Lithgow. This is the film that inspired Blowout in one of my favorite Criterion Collection editions. So this comes in at spine number 865. It's a great edition from Criterion, great film. Michelangelo Antonioni's Blow Up. Definitely check out this digipack, it's, it's, it's excellent. The next film gets us to the year 1971, and this is a film starring Dustin Hoffman, and it's a really good one. I really enjoyed this Criterion Collection edition. It's a great thriller that I highly recommend from Sam Peckinpah, and that is Straw Dogs. So this is a great film. In this film, Dustin Hoffman plays David Sumner. He's an American who is living abroad in rural England with his British wife, and they're encountering some harassment from the locals in that community. His wife is from that local British community, that rural England town that they're living in, and they're encountering some harassment from the locals. So there's some history there between his wife and the men who live in that town. And so there's some, some dynamics and drama that spins off of that. And it really builds tension throughout the film that comes to a head near the end of the film. And so this is definitely a film that you're gonna wanna check out from a suspense, tension, thriller standpoint. This is an excellent film from Sam Peckinpah. Dustin Hoffman is great in this film. His wife, Amy, is played by actress Susan George. This is just a phenomenal film that I highly recommend checking out. So there is a 2011 remake of this film that stars James Marsden and Kate Bosworth that's in a different setting, the U.S. Deep South versus rural England. And I don't think I've seen that film, but you might want to check that one out as well. But this is the 1971 film starring Dustin Hoffman and Susan George that I highly recommend. It's Straw Dogs, 1971 Sam Peckinpah film. Definitely check this one out. Straw Dogs is a really good one. All right, so the next film is a film from 1980 from one of my favorite directors, Brian De Palma. And this stars Angie Dickinson and Michael Caine in a famous all-time movie. This is a Brian De Palma film and it's Dressed to Kill. This is a really, really nice film. This comes in at spine number 770 in the Criterion Collection. And this is just a phenomenal film that I highly recommend checking out in the thriller suspense category. This is a great film that really shows some of the camera work that Brian De Palma does with the split screen and the different uh, optical techniques that he applies. That is on full display in this movie and I definitely enjoyed watching this movie. I mean, I enjoyed every bit of this film. This film just plays out so beautifully with Angie Dickinson's character, Michael Caine's character. So in this film, a blonde woman kills the patient of a psychiatrist and then goes after the call girl who witnesses the murder. So that's the general plot of this film. I don't wanna really say much more about it than that. This is a film that you wanna experience yourself, so I highly recommend it. Great performance by Angie Dickinson, great performance as always by Sir Michael Caine, and this is one you definitely wanna check out, is 1980's Dress to Kill from Brian De Palma. This is a good one. Oh, you also want to make sure for Dress to Kill that you get the second pressing. If you pick this one up, make sure that you get the second pressing of this because the first pressing, they had some issues with the video. It was squishing the characters and made the characters look, made the characters look long versus a normal, normal, you know, proportions. 
So you'll want to make sure that you get the second pressing of this. Uh, if you order it directly from Criterion or from an, a retailer like Amazon, you're going to get the second pressing. But if you order it off of eBay or somewhere like that, you just want to be careful that you're getting the second pressing of this edition from Criterion versus the first pressing. So keep that in mind. The next title that I will talk about here is a title that is the feature film debut from the Coen brothers who are among my favorite directors. I love films from them like Fargo, like No Country for Old Men. This is their feature film debut and it's from 1984, I think. Yeah, 1984 and it's called Blood Simple. And this is a film by Joel and Ethan Coen, the legendary Coen brothers. And this is a great film. This is a film that is Got, got the neon colors going on. It just has some really nice scenery and a nice atmosphere to it. It's a film that you just wanna get immersed into that world as you're watching it. And I really, really enjoyed this film. And the story itself is basically about an owner of a Texas bar. He hires a private investigator to spy on his wife that he suspects is having an affair. And then he eventually plots to have her killed. And then the events spawn off of that that create the drama and suspense and tension in this film. It's just a great film that you want to check out if you haven't checked this one out already. This comes in at spine number 834 in the Criterion Collection and it's definitely a film that you want to check out. If you have not checked out Blood Simple, definitely check this one out. If you're a fan of the Coen brothers, if you like their films, you definitely want to check this one out. This is their feature film debut and it's a really good one. It's called Blood Simple. So. Highly recommend Blood Simple. So, and then another film from the 1980s. I'm covering three films from the 80s in this. So I'm spanning, I'm spanning a lot of decades from the 30s, the 50s, the 60s. I talked about 1971's Straw Dogs, but I'm talking about three films in the 1980s. The third film is a film from across the pond and it is a film from George Sluzer and it's from 1988. And this is a really, really good one that if you haven't checked out, I highly recommend. It's called The Vanishing. Now this film is in French and Dutch, and this film is so, so good. I mean, this is a film from director George Sluzer from 1988. It comes in at spine number 133 in the Criterion Collection, so it's been in the collection for a while, and it's called The Vanishing. And this film stars Bernard Pierre Donadu and Jean Bervoltz and Johanna Ter Stieg. And this film is so, so good. I cannot even begin to tell you. It's a great suspense thriller with tension. It definitely keeps your attention throughout. You're wondering what's gonna happen next, beat by beat, as the film goes on. And essentially, you have Rex and Saskia. They are lovers, they're vacationing together, and Saskia is abducted. And then eventually, the abductor contacts Rex and you get into this cat and mouse game between Rex and the abductor that drives the suspense and the thriller element of this film. And this is a film that you definitely wanna check out from George Sluzer. This film is so, so good. It's a great suspense thriller that I highly, highly recommend. And there's also a 1993 remake of this film the Vanishing that stars Jeff Bridges, Kiefer Sutherland, and Nancy Travis. So you might want to check that one out as well. But this is the Criterion Collection edition of the George Sluzer film from 1988 called The Vanishing. Highly recommended. Definitely check this one out. This is a film that's been out for a while on Blu-ray. I'm not sure when this one came out. And it's one that you may not be on your radar, but if you're putting together your list, and you're thinking of what's a good suspense thriller to add to my list if you like that kind of film. This is a film you might not be thinking about that you might want to put on your radar and put on your list. This is a really good one. Definitely check out The Vanishing. All right, so I've got two more left here, and these are two really excellent films from two outstanding directors. And one is a film that probably ranks up there as one of the greatest films that's ever been made. It's one of the best films that's come out literally in the last 30 years. It came out 30 years ago in 1991. And it's a Jonathan Demme film that stars Jodie Foster, Anthony Hopkins, and Scott Glenn in just a 
absolutely extraordinary film that features one of the most legendary performances of all time by Anthony Hopkins, and that is The Silence of the Lambs. So this is 1991's The Silence of the Lambs based on the Thomas Harris novel, I believe. So in this film, Jodie Foster plays an FBI agent who is in the middle of an investigation and she has to get help from Anthony Hopkins' Hannibal Lecter character, who is an incarcerated serial killer. She has to get his help to get the clues that she needs to find Buffalo Bill, who is a serial killer who's out in the wild, who's on the loose that they're trying to capture. And so she has to work with Hannibal Lecter to find this serial killer. And this Silence of the Lambs film is just an incredible ride. It's one of the best suspense thrillers that has been made at least in the last 30 years. And one of the best suspense thrillers of all time. It stars Anthony Hopkins in one of the most legendary performances that has ever been put to celluloid. And that is his performance as Dr. Hannibal Lecter. Jodie Foster is amazing in this. Scott Glenn is amazing in this. This is a film from Jonathan Demme that I highly recommend The Silence of the Lambs. Interesting note about this film, there's only two films in cinema history that have won the top five Academy Awards. So, so that would be Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Screenplay, Best Director, and Best Picture. The Silence of the Lambs won those top five Academy Awards and only one other film in cinema history has ever done that and that's 1934's It Happened One Night. So this film is in pretty elite category and it's one of the great films of all time. It's called The Silence of the Lambs from Jonathan Demme. Definitely check this one out. Great digipack edition of this film and I really, really, really like this edition from Criterion. You get two discs and a nice booklet which is really, really nice. So. This one comes highly, highly recommended. It's one of the great films of all time. It's from director Jonathan Demme, 1991 Silence of the Lambs. Definitely check this one out. Comes in at spine number 13, the Criterion Collection. This is a good one. Check it out. All right, so the last film I'm gonna cover in this recommended thrillers, these nine thrillers I'm recommending is a film from filmmaker David Lynch that I highly recommend. If you are a fan of David Lynch, this is definitely a film that if you have not seen, you must see. If it's a film you don't already have in the Criterion Collection, definitely add this one. This is spy number 779, it's Mulholland Drive. This is a 2001 film from David Lynch. And David Lynch is just a fantastic director, as many of you, you know, may know from Twin Peaks, from Lost Highway, from all the wonderful films that he's made, The Elephant Man, Blue Velvet. Mulholland Drive is just a phenomenal film and it's a film that is full of intrigue and mystery and it stars Naomi Watts and Laura Herring in this film that is really famous for being a film that is open to a lot of interpretation about what it means. So essentially you have a, an actress who is doing her thing in Hollywood, trying to make her way in Hollywood and she gets into a car accident on Mulholland Drive. And as a result of that accident, she has amnesia. After that, she enters this world of mystery and intrigue where she's trying to figure out what her, what's going on in her life or unravel the events of her life. So it's just one of those crazy kind of films. There's a lot of weird imagery in the film, weird characters, different kinds of odd situations going on in this film that make up the events of Mulholland Drive. And it's just an intriguing film to watch. So this is from 2001, starring Naomi Watts and Laura Herring, and this is just a great film. This comes in at spine number 779 in the Criterion Collection. And this is a very nice digipack edition. So this edition, you'll see you have the blue key there. This is just a great, a great edition from the Criterion Collection. You get a nice book here. You see both sides of the book. And when you open up, when you have the case here, you get these different pictures of these images. And this is just fantastic all the way around. All these wonderful images from this film. And this just makes for an excellent addition from the Criterion Collection. The, see the blue key, which is key to the film. Pun fully intended. But this is just a great, great digipack edition that I highly recommend. Mulholland Drive, 2001, director David Lynch. 
what more do I need to say? This is a great suspense thriller. And this is the type of film that really keeps you thinking and guessing all the way through, not only the end, but even after watching this film, it's the type of film that you wanna watch again and again to really better understand what's going on in this movie and try to piece together what's really happening before your eyes and then reading on the internet the different interpretations of what this film means. So this is a great film from David Lynch, 2001 Small Holland Drive, check it out. So there you have it. These are the films that I would recommend in this upcoming Barnes & Noble Criterion Collection sale in the suspense thriller category. These are nine films that if you don't already have in your collection, if you haven't seen these films, if you, you like these directors, but maybe you haven't checked these films out, or maybe you check these films out already, but you don't yet have them in your collection, these are nine titles that I highly, highly recommend adding to your collection. So The 39 Steps, The Night of the Hunter, Blow Up, Straw Dogs, Dress to Kill, Blood Simple, The Vanishing, The Silence of the Lambs, and Mulholland Drive. These are films from a variety of directors. They span multiple decades, going back to the 1930s, 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, all the way up to 2001. So really nice span of decades there. A lot of different actors and directors that are involved in these projects, and they all come highly recommended. So I think there's something in there for everybody, and I highly recommend considering picking up one or two of these titles if you are interested in this particular uh, category. So there you have it. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think about these films? Have you seen any of these films? Do you like any of these films? Do you have any of these titles in your collection already? If so, what do you think about these titles? Also, let me know in the comments below what titles you are looking forward to picking up in this Barnes & Noble Criterion Collection sale here in the United States. The sale is getting very close at this point. I'm really excited about it. So let me know what titles you're looking forward to picking up. And also let me know, is there a box set that you are eyeing in this upcoming sale? Are you looking at that Fellini set? Are you looking at that Bergman set? Are you thinking about picking up the Varda set or maybe the Bruce Lee set or the Louis Bunuel set? Is there a box set that has your eye for this upcoming Criterion Collection sale? If so, what box set are you looking to pick up? As always, thanks for watching and we'll look to see you next time at the movies. Peace.